Hello and just a great big welcome to you. We're glad you decided to join us here at 3ABN Family Worship. We're going to be doing part two of Lot's Wife. I think it's an intriguing study, at least there's so much information and always I think I stress this is what we study and how it pertains to the hour that we're living in and before Jesus comes, some of the things that God's people will be going through. So we can learn from these things. So we're encouraging you, say happy Sabbath to you, get your family, gather them around, get your Bible and you know, we always say pencil and paper because you jot things down. If you're like I am, you hear some things and I've always, I've always said this, I've never learned anything while I'm talking. Mm. <laughs> it's when I'm listening. <laughs> Is that okay to be honest about it? Just that's the way it is. Really, in my Christian experience, the things that I've heard people say, and it may be a one-liner, it may be a word or two, that's changed my whole outlook on things. And, and you know, it's really helped a lot. I'm listening. And the Bible said, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Anyway, we're glad you've joined us, and we want you to spend this hour with us, part two of Lot's Wife. And I thought maybe we'd just take a few moments and go over some of the things we're talking about, the numerous parallels. Now, regardless of how many parallels we talk about here as quickly as we can and get into our study, you will have many more. I understand that that's good. That means you've been studying the Word of God and yeah. keep doing that. But again, these bring me back to, oh, these are the things that we need to hide in our heart. We realize this took place this, and this is why it took place. And so the first one is the corruptions of the inhabitants of Sodom parallel about our lifestyles today. What's taking place in the world today, we can look at and say, oh my, those same things were taking place, mm -hmm. you know, at, at, at time, you know, a, right. a lot. And, and it's just very interesting. And then the, the Bible warns us a lot of times the people who are sounding the warning message, sometimes people say, oh, they're just alarmist. Mm. You know, oh, they're just making a big, big noise. We don't have to worry about those things. But we have to realize we're to make, uh, you know, a, a loud sound. We're to uh, blow a trumpet in Zion. Amen. And again, many people will say, you're just an alarmist. This is not real. Don't worry about it. Are you being political? Yeah, are you being political? And that, that's supposed to keep you quiet. But I think that we're not worried about that. We can't. We have a job to do. And God wants us to do it. Amen. Amen. And, and as Christian believers, as we study, you know, Lot and his family, uh, Sometimes we, we hesitate, and I think I have too, and I think the panel will decide that as we go and you introduce them in just a moment. Uh, I've hesitated sometime when I think I really know what God wants me to do in the direction that He wants you to go and maybe me to go, and we've hesitated because it, it, the family may not like it or the church may not like it or whatever, or, and so we hesitate, but when we hesitate, many times it just simply shows a lack of Mm, lack of faith, faith That's right. mm -hmm. and love for God. And we're not putting him first. We're worried about what everybody else is going to say on that. We yeah. have to be careful and do that. And uh, we'd look about Lot's swift uh, exit from Sodom parallels our time when we have to flee, mm -hmm. you know, when the Sunday laws and all this in the mark of the beast and all these things, there's time we're going to have to go. And are we going to really just take off and go? When God says to go, are we going to hesitate? And there's consequences if we hesitate mm. and we don't want to do that. And we Amen. pray that we've talked about that in part one and we'll talk more about it here in part two. But know this for sure, that the angels of God will be with his people. Amen. Yeah. And he's going to lead them. And it thrilled my heart so much that they reached down and as it were, at least in my mind, to think they got a hold of the hand, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and led them out because they still hesitated. That's right. And so sometimes we still hesitate. We know that we should, but God knows the heart. That's right. And He'll reach down and get a hold of you and, 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 and kind of give you a little nudge and a little helping hand that's beautiful. And I know when we choose to separate from evil in this world, there's, not everybody's going to be with you. Even your own brothers and sisters sometimes can, oh, you know, like it's, it's cause some you know, anxiety. And then we begin to reevaluate, are we really doing the right thing? I, I want my kids to love me and I, I want them to, you know, and, but we need to follow what God has for us and right. the plan. And I always say, don't look to the right, don't look to the left. You know, so anyway, that's just got a little something that we've discussed, and I think we'll discuss these more as we go, and there's more, but we'll discuss them more as we go. Honey, I'm glad to have you with me today. I never say it. Uh, my name's Kenny, by the way, Shelton. So anyway, my <laughs> wife, Chris, and uh, I'm always glad to have you to, to, uh, by my side. And I'm always glad to be here. Yeah, 
Yes, yeah. and I want to encourage those of you at home to go on the website, or not the website, but you can go online mm -hmm. and look for 3ABN Lot's Wife Part 1. And we go into much more detail yes. Oh, yes. on those parallels between the time of Lot and Sodom and then our day today. Good. And I think you get, the panel did a really good job, you know, oh, real, bringing uh, yes. us into depth on those that topic. Yes. But uh, yeah. we do have more family around the table. Go ahead with it. All and right. uh, to my left is mm -hmm. Sister Linda Clark and mm -hmm. her husband, brother. Elder Eddie Clark, Thank you. and we always are blessed to have you guys here. In fact, we before the cameras were turned on, they mm. they were ready to go, and we've been Ooh. having a little Bible study yes. prior to this study together with you. Amen. And then to your right and mm. my right is Sister Marilyn mm -hmm. and her husband er, uh, Eric Durant. Um, anyway, we always love having them here, yeah, and yeah. they are. Everybody here is just a part of a family. We're all part of a great big family of the Lord. And, mm -hmm. and what a blessing to be yeah, able to come sure. in. What a blessing to be able to come into 3AB in the building and just feel welcome, feel at home. And everybody seems, I know not everybody can be happy all the time, but at least they, they seem happy when we they get here. They seem happy yeah. and they just do everything they can to, to make, make yes. you comfortable and yes. do whatever you want. And I come in and they say, I want to change seats and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, okay, we're in the we'll, we'll change, you know, just everything they can to help and to yeah. be a blessing. Mm -hmm. So that's yes. so much. That's hospitality. And actually that goes a lot, right along it, with... Uh, our lesson if we because, see how that fits, yes. and I hope somebody brings that up as we talk about it, and the hospitality, hmm. if Lot had not shown hospitality, and I'm going to kind of leave it at that, things would have turned out different. Much different. Yes. Much different. So mm -hmm. anyway, okay, we need to have prayer, honey, and just get, I'm just, sure. I guess I've waited, there's a lot of time going on here, but we need to have prayer. Brother Ed, how about you? Opening prayer, please. Sure. Let's bow our heads, shall we? Mm. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love for us. We thank mm. you for this time that we have to study your holy word, Amen. to study the things that you've made available to us Amen. so that we can learn and know and understand not only the things that we are faced with in these last days, yes. but also how to be prepared. Amen. May we learn how to apply these things to our lives. May we be the witnesses that you call us Amen. to be. May we be ready for Amen. Jesus' soon return. Amen. We pray this in Christ's name. Thank Amen. Lord. Amen. 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 Okay, honey, we're going to start with what, question number two. Number two. Yeah. And uh, in part one, you'll hear me say that this study yeah. really challenged me. And um, yes. this is kind of getting into that challenge, this question number two. Okay. Patriarchs and Prophets, it's a, a book. I hope if you don't have it, you can look online and maybe try to read it online or get a copy yes. of it. But chapter 14 on page 161 reveals more heavenly inspired information about Lot's wife. And remember the title of our lesson is Lot's wife. Mm. While her body was on the plane, and now I'm quoting, her heart clung to Sodom and she perished with it. She rebelled against God because his judgment involved her possessions and her children oh. in the ruin. Although greatly favored in being called out from that wicked city, she felt that she was severely dealt with because mm. of the wealth that they had taken years to accumulate must be left to destruction. Wow. Instead of thankfully accepting deliverance, she presumptuously looked back to desire the life of those who had rejected the divine warning. Mm. Wow. And we know that that had to be her children mm -hmm. and probably her grandchildren. Sure. Her sin showed her to be unworthy of life mm -hmm. for the preservation of which she felt so little gratitude. Mm -hmm. When I first read this yeah. statement again, I just cried out, Lord, help me. Mm not thinking of the wealth, but really rather of the children and the family that were being mm -hmm. destroyed and what they were going through wow. as that um, fire and brimstone was being rained down. Mm. And the question is, can a mother forget her child? Could, Lot, could Lot's wife really understand the consequence of her thoughts that became just a glance oh of grief? Mm. And that's the question. Okay. I want to unpack those right. two questions. I found that's that heavy. Yeah. I found it heavy. Yeah. I feel like as we studied that mm -hmm. God gave me 
more understanding and more direction, but it's still, as a mother, it's very difficult. It is. And, I mean, and as a father. I mean, if, if you read on in Patriarchs and Prophets on this chapter, it talks about the grief that, that Lot himself had over losing his children. Amen. You know, this was, he was terrified. He, he was shocked. Yeah. All these things was happening so quickly. You know, they didn't have mm. cell phones back then. They didn't have yeah. telegraphs. They didn't have anybody warning them, hey, mm -hmm. two angels are coming. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. this is going to happen. It happened very, very quickly. I think one of the reasons why this was put in here is because God wants us to know when the time comes, we have to be willing to turn our backs on everything Come on. and follow the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right. And we may lose turning everything. your back on your children, oh, turning right. your back on your occupation, turning that's oh. not an easy thing to do, but he's letting us know through this instance, that's what we're going to have to do. Brother, I can't tell right. you how many times I teared up, even, mm -hmm. you know, preparing for part one, preparing for part two, mm -hmm. just reading through and just tearing up and just grieving, not just for my kids, but other people. You know, other people that we love, other people that we, mm -hmm. even seeing my own weaknesses yeah. in this area, mm. because it seems so natural to just say, oh, what about, right. Mm -hmm. what are they going through? Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I think that's one of the situations where um, I heard a, a pastor one time when he was telling about uh, teaching his children to, to drive. He said, now there's thir certain things that you have to predetermine and pre-decide before the event even occurs. Well, wow. And he said, when you're driving down the road and a deer runs out in front of you, mm. just hit the brakes. Don't try to swerve mm -hmm. to, because you never know what might happen. And he relayed a story of how that exact thing happened to a couple of young girls in high school and they hit a tree and it killed them. Oh, how yes. crazy. And so we have to predetermine when certain things, when certain events occur in our, in our life, we have to already have decided, we've already made this decision. Good. We have to decide ahead of time who we serve. I wanted to, yeah. were you getting ready to say go something? Ahead. No, yes. oh, go ahead. I just really I, appreciated what he said because yeah, I well. think that helps to mm -hmm. understand how to deal with this situation because if we are alive and remain at the second coming, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're gonna be experiencing this oh, yeah. and we have to predetermine mm -hmm. to be obedient Amen. Amen. Right. I was Amen. thinking of Matthew 10, 37 to 39. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake oh. shall find it. That's beautiful. Mm. Chris, yeah. if we stay with them, will suffer the faith that they suffer. Mm -hmm. That's so right. God is saying you have to turn your back on them and leave because I have to take, I have to cleanse the world mm -hmm. of sin. Amen. And you can't stay with that sin and expect to survive. And, yeah. and I like the, the point that Mrs. White brought out mm -hmm. where look at how, I can't think of exactly, I don't recall exactly how she said it, but how special God was treating Lot mm -hmm. and his family. And, his well, yes. and this special endeavor to save them. And his wife, she just acted like, well, that really wasn't anything special. It's mm -hmm. what the Lord's doing for me is not that special. What's really special is what's still back in Sodom. And, and so she missed the blessing <laughs> missed it. Of, of the specialness that the Lord puts upon us. She was, she, she was doing what her husband and angel told her to do, but her heart was still Thank you. back home. Yes. And that was the problem. Her heart was still there. Yeah. Amen. I think that, that we need to understand, uh, and I think we all, you know, have a knowledge of this to a great degree, that God loves our loved ones more than we possibly could. That's good. A yeah. mother can, can uh, a mother may forget her sucking child, That's but it. I can't forget your sucking child. The Lord loves our yes. families. If he can save them, he will. That's right. And he's going to. If there's any chance at all, if there's an open door, he's going oh, yeah. to find his way in, that, in that door. Come on. So we, we have yeah. to remember that uh, so, the grief that we, we, sh we have, it's shared by God. Amen. So this, 
simple answer really to that. I just keep going back. Can a mother forget her child? I mean, what's the real simple answer? I think it's been answered three or four different times, but the, can a mother forget her child? No. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't think you ever can. Can God, even for loss, is, can God ever forget me if I'm lost? Mm. Through the eternal ages, will He ever forget me? Amen. I don't think He can, but He understands we had a choice. You see, Amen. But here, is, isn't it about the choice that we make, much as we love them and we can't forget who they are. But we have to say, I think you've, each one of you brought that out nicely, really, is God has to be put first. And we have to be careful that our children don't influence us to make the wrong choices and decisions, right. just like their children did and the son-in-laws. Very good. See, Very you good. just can't let them, and they pressure you sometimes. Oh, you guys are ridiculous. You, you, for instance, you, you, you keep the old Sabbath. Or if you don't and do all this, you start, if you don't do this or that, then I'm, you're not going to see your grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you, you feel threatened by it and you kind of think, well, we'll, we'll kind of keep quiet. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about that several different occasions about it, that we, we're not going to try to hide the truth from, be honest, our grandchildren. Even if we, even if we were told not to do it or you won't be able to see them when we have them, we have to present what we believe is truth and right, you know, t according to their age and so on and so forth. But we have an obligation like, well, we can't mention this because if you just hear her sometime with the grandkids, <laughs> 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 there'll be songs that will break out. Aww. Sabbath is a happy time. <laughs> I think there comes a time <laughs> when I tell Marilyn this a lot. Mm -hmm. I've done my best to provide for the family. Come on. Home, mm -hmm. transportation, insurance, those things like that. Mm -hmm. But there's going to come a point in time if we live to see these events take place where she's on her own. Yeah. It's her and her angel. Mm -hmm. Mercy. And it's her and her relationship with God. And it's me and my relationship with God. And it's the kids and their relationship with yes. God. Yeah. And Lot and his wife, they reached a point where they were told to flee and they fled, but her heart still stayed yeah. back with where she was. So can we really turn loose? That's what you're saying. There comes a time. Isn't that right you're saying? I, I, and that's one of the points I th that when you mentioned the Lord is always going to remember us through eternity. Yeah. He wears the scars on yes. his hands that's right. and Thank feet you. and Amen. side sure. for the whole world. Amen. Amen. And so the Bible talks about, and Mrs. White talks about, when we come to appreciate what Christ did on the cross, oh, okay. then it's going to make it a little easier. I can't say easy, All but right. it's going to be a little easier mm -hmm. to leave Sodom and Sodom and come out, be separate, be mm -hmm. peculiar, because we know what the Lord has done for us. And it saddens us that sometimes our family members don't accept that gift. He's not well. saying, he's not saying leave your love behind. Your love's going to be forever. He's saying you have to leave, if I dare say it, say them it. behind yes. so that you can move on because they've made their decision. And sometimes that's a very hard thing to do. Your love makes you wow. cling to them closer than you should cling to them. And, wow. and, and yeah. Lot and his wife, They've gone through a lot of things that we are going through. Go on. E even before the time of trouble hits, we have gone through some of this. I'm going to look at page uh, prophets in Patriarchs and Prophets, mm -hmm. page 159, and this is after the angels, which was such a blessing mm -hmm. because apparently the sons-in-laws and the daughters may not even been living up to the light that they had in Christ or in God at mm -hmm. that time. They didn't know um, the Son as Christ at that point, but. Uh, he told them, he gave him time. Right. It may have been during the night, but he gave them time. Go tell them, go warn them, go mm -hmm. get them. And he, the angel says, up, get out of this place, oh. for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed to them as one that mocked. Oh, that oh. was the family. They felt like that that he was just mocking, he was making it up, you know, something's wrong with this old man. Yeah. And I know a lot of times when we have warned our family mm. that we get that same feeling, mm. well, they're just, you know, fanatics or they're just conspiracy a little alarmist, theorist. conspiracy theorists. Yeah. You know, they laughed at what they called his super 
superstitious fears. Yeah. His daughters were influenced oh. by their husbands. Yes. That shows the importance of Come influence. Mm -hmm. Even between husbands and wife, you know, we have to put God first. I understand that. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's very difficult, you know, when you have somebody that you're so connected to. And, and we all, especially if you're an Adventist, you try to reason everything out. And that's yeah. why I, when I read through this stuff, I'm thinking, you know, I'm one of those things. I don't want to act too fast because I don't want it to be the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I want to weigh it out, yeah. you know, weigh it out with scripture. Yeah. They didn't have time to really weigh things out at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Didn't Christ cry out at the cross, Father, where are you? Mm -hmm. God left Christ behind. Mm at the cross. Interesting okay. thought. He didn't leave his love. He still right. loved his son. Sure. But at that time when, when he cried out, Separated. where are you, Father? He was gone. There was a separation. Well, there was a separation. Actually, the separation felt like really far. But if yeah. you recall in that story, mm -hmm. the clouds came close. close. Mm -hmm. Ellen White says that God the Father got as close as he could, That's right. shrouded in the clouds. That's right. But the separation felt, mm -hmm. oh yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there were some people, if they wanted to know, they could have known mm -hmm. by that point. It's mm -hmm. kind of like with us, you know, with things that we just went through with COVID, many of us sensed, you know, that that was a pestilence. It's another sign of the times, things that were being shut down. We see that in spirit of mm -hmm. prophecy and through the Bible that these things are going to happen. So we could see the parallels, yeah. but just going back to what I was reading, it says they were well enough off where they were, they could see no evidence That's of danger. Right. Yeah. See, oh, we're boy. living in the same time that we're sounding the alarm. Yeah. Um, Revelation, is it 18, where you have the, the uh, fourth, fourth angel, angel. supposed mm -hmm. to give this message power. Mm -hmm. And yet there's a lot of people that say they can see no evidence of danger. They had great possessions and they couldn't believe that it was possible that beautiful Sodom would ever be destroyed. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just, it's sad because you, you read down into on page 160 and it talks about Lot himself. Mm -hmm. The thought of leaving those whom he held dearest on earth seemed more than he could bear. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think it would be mm -hmm. for all of us. So that, that's why I, th you know, at first glance of reading this so many years, you know, of her turning around and da, 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 da. But if you put yourself in that place, it'd right. be easy for it, us it, to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because when your child's hurting, no, you want to be there to help or, or you think about them losing their eternal life, even the thought of losing it in hell fire. Mm -hmm. You don't want anyone to go through that, right. especially those who you love mm -hmm. so dearly, who you pray for so dearly. Mm -hmm. But, and that's why I loved what you had said. We need to predetermine. Yeah. I like that word predetermine. We need to know how to handle Absolutely. it and realize that it's a lot. And, and, and what you, we don't want anybody to be mistaken with Sodom and Gomorrah and destruction of it. They were warned. They knew the lifestyle. They knew they were doing wrong. Yes. They were warned over and over and over these things were happening and so on and so forth. But they love the lifestyle just like people do today. That's You've right. met them today. Uh, do you know Jesus? Well, I don't know Jesus. You know, in other words, we like what we're doing. We love the the life that we're That's leading. Right. We like to go out and we do. I don't know how you folks do. You know, blah, blah, blah. well, and there's a lot of cheap grace that's mixed in the mix, also. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like the. I went into a little bit of the backstory on this, mm -hmm. and I went back to where, uh, when Lot and Sodom and all of these other cities, they were captured and hauled off captive. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the Bible brings out that Abraham was witnessing mm -hmm. to the king of Sodom and to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah right. and all of those people right. around. That's right. Even, especially when Melchizedek came up and they basically had a little worship service. Mm. And so right there you have Abraham witnessing. Absolutely not only with that event, but they knew who Abraham was. Right. They knew how he yeah. lived. They knew what God he served. That's right. They saw the deliverance mm -hmm. that they received wow. through Abraham, but yet they still decided, well, that was just a little oh, small boy. event. We're going to continue on down the road right. that we were always on. Well, wasn't it because of Abraham, God had mercy mm -hmm. on Sodom? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Because absolutely. Christ, 
and the angels had visited Abraham first and he right. told them that Abraham was the only one that knew that this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. right. And that's when he started to bargain with God. Well, what if you, you know, I don't right. remember what the numbers were. We'll say right. 50, 50 right. righteous, yeah, 40, 30, right. you know, 20, da, 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 on down. But there weren't enough people in the yeah. area. And with <laughs> what you brought out, Spirit of Prophecy talks about that too. And they realized with everything that had happened, um, when Abraham went back, you know, he wasn't a man of war mm -hmm. and he's taken all these people that were not men of war and he did something that was miraculous and they realized he <laughs> could not have done that on his own. Mm -hmm. But there again, just like us, if we put ourselves in that position to turn our back against God or anybody else that does, you know, mm -hmm. they had a choice right then to serve God because there was another example. It was like he was ministering to them as an evangelist without even knowing it. It, it, was, another, it was another situation of, of uh, Jonah mm -hmm. yeah. going to Nineveh. It, it was just another situation just like that. Yeah. yeah I, I, like I say, when you look at these, as if what's happening today is what led to this was their, again, luxury, mm -hmm. their lifestyle, yeah. their money, and idle time. That's right. That's idle time. And notice more and more and more different countries are looking at, let's break this down to a four week work. You know, six days shall you labor and do all your work. Seventh days is Sabbath. This is what happened, what took place. They loved idleness. They, it was, and I think one point it says on here, uh, this made them a prey for Satan. Their mm -hmm. idle time. <laughs> They had nothing to do. They wanted to, to play. And, you know, what do we have today? Everything you can think about. And mm. God loves sports mm -hmm. and so all my life, blah, blah, blah. But I look at them today, it's, you have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. The enemy will use all those things to keep right. us involved in all this here and, and keep from preparing, like you say, to make decisions. If this happens by the grace of God, this is what I want to do. If you don't spend enough time with God now, yes. mm -hmm. you won't be strong enough. Thank you. To turn your back on the things that you need to turn your back so on. So that's what, that's what kind of that's goes through right. my mind is how do we come, keep from becoming acclimated to the world so we can avoid those same thoughts and those same feelings that Lot's wife did. Mm. How do we, and I think it's what you said, yeah. Eric, is we've got to spend time with God. Our your love, your, your love grows. Great, great. When you spend time with Him, your love grows. Mm -hmm. And you'll need all of that love when the time comes to turn your back on others that you love. That's right. And that's, that's the only really, way. That's the only way. Amen. And they, you find it a lot of times the children are different ones in your family, friends. They love, they want to be around and they want to do things as long as it's on the social level. You know, what, mm -hmm. come and do this, come that. You say, well, why don't you come and do some spiritual things with her, come and visit the church or do whatever. Oh, they want. But then if you don't go to all their little parties and all their get-togethers and all their blah, 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 it's like, well, you don't care. You don't love us, you know. Mm -hmm. right. We try not to do that when you spiritually, you try to say to them, you know, come. We have, we have something to offer. Right. It's not just all the parties and all the good times and the get-togethers and all this here. It's eternal life yeah. that we're interested in and we want to, you know, invite them to be a part of that. But they don't want that. So there's no, you know, so I, I feel like sometimes I've just... You know, some of the other things of the world, I, I, I have other things to do that's least is important to me that I need to be doing what little time that we're limited with and so on and so forth. So exactly. it kind of makes you look like an enemy and you don't care. That's not true. Well, the, mm -hmm. the Bible says we're supposed to come out and be separate. Mm -hmm. And touch not. And touch not the unclean thing. Well, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We there are certain things that we're not going to be able to, no matter what the family is, you know, how close they are, whatever yes. the relationship yeah. was, mm -hmm. however close you were when you grew up as kids, mm -hmm. the Bible says, come out, be separate, don't touch the we're, unclean we're, thing. We're, and we're, we just have to be as nice as possible about it and stand on our morals. Yeah, we're not above that, Marilyn and myself, because we fought coming into God's ministry. Mm -hmm. Come on. I mean, we had, we lived pretty comfortable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it took us three times. Mm -hmm. The first time we said, no, we're uh -huh. not interested. <laughs> Second time we said, no, we're not Ooh. interested. The third time it finally got through to me that I was rejecting God mm. by not answering this call. Mm -hmm. And each time it happened, it wasn't registering what I was doing until I reached the third time. And I said, I rejected them three times. Mm -hmm. And that, that hit me here. Yeah. And I promised yeah. when I was a kid, and these are one of the stories I read, mm -hmm. um, 
Sodom and Gomorrah. I promise when I read this as a kid, I would never turn my back on God like these people did. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I was doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why we joined the ministry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why the Holy Spirit continues to, to reach out, continue, you rejected it at first. And we've all done that. We're not saying that, but the first time. But your heart was saying, I, I, I don't want to be like this. I'm, I'm going to, when the call comes and I know that I need to, I'm going to, That's you right. know, your heart was in it. You want to do the right thing. God right. knows that. That's right. So we're rejecting, but he's coming right back to us. But he also knows the time when that's it. The last call will be made. That's yes. what we encourage people. Yes. There's a time that comes that's going to be the last mm -hmm. call. For some of them who are out there, we want them to think with us. Because they continue to reject God's reject. mercy. And in one of these days, that's going to be it. And eventually, He's going to give us what, what we, we desire. Oh. And that's it. You know, it's yeah. not Him just verbatimly cutting the people off, saying, oh, well, I gave Him a little chance. I'm going to cut Him off. Uh -uh. Yeah. No. You know, it's their choice. And only exactly. God knows when we're no longer going to come yeah. to Him. Only he knows right. and he waits and he waits and he's got more patience and mercy and Praise God. long suffering of love than, than we Praise can ever God. even imagine. Right. I mean, think of all of us, yes. you know, only by the grace of God are we sitting here. That's a fact. Amen. You know, Amen. we, each of us could have taken a wrong turn. Oh. And, and this is what's so important with Lot and his family because, you know, Abraham and I like one time, I don't remember when we were talking about, but Abraham gave Lot the choice. Yes. You know, Abraham was a very wealthy man. He had accumulated a lot of livestock yes. and things, but he owned nothing because he was looking for that better land, that mm. promised land, which he never saw in his day. He, he will see it at the resurrection, you know, right. after the resurrection, right. but he didn't see it. But lots of, hmm, that looks really good down there. They've got a lot of nice weather, a lot of palm trees, a lot of good fruit, lots of money. Yeah. And see, Without thinking, he thought he could go there and live amongst them. <laughs> That's right. And make yeah. all this money and still love God too. Now, I'm not saying that cannot happen in certain instances, but as what we brought out in, in program number one, God is telling his people today, get out of the cities. Mm -hmm. Because when we put ourselves mm -hmm. there to make more money, mm -hmm. we may lose the most mm -hmm. precious jewels that God has ever given us. Yeah. What, what and did, that's what happened with Lot right here. Yeah. He lost the jewels of his Ooh. children. Yeah. Those children were his yeah. jewels. In fact, it says he was stupefied with sorrow. Yeah. He lingered Stupor. and loathed to depart. He lingered, he hesitated. Mm -hmm. And we're also told if he hadn't hesitated, yeah. that that would have been enough to have saved his wife. Yeah. Wow. That she would have followed him, she would have been impressed enough by his strength and his faith in God mm -hmm. and his faith in doing what is right because she mm -hmm. knew he loved his children just as much. Mm -hmm. Right that she would have followed through. Right. So that kind of yeah. goes into the second part of that question. She, did she really understand? Because, and that came out of my heart when I was reading this because well. I, I feel like it's just so natural to do those things. Right. But God is, is calling us, I, what was that word again? The predetermined, what was the word? Oh, predetermined. Predetermined. Um, beforehand. To beforehand. Make the right choice the right choice because sometimes our natural choices are of this world. We look at, yeah. we look at things like that today, at least um, we have a choice. Let's just say, say go, nobody's really done this, I'm sure, but to go to, to, to ministries yes. or to go do something. First thing we look at is who's the biggest ministry? Hmm. Who has the most money coming in? Mm. What can I get? It's okay. How, you know, what, what can I gain from this? Mm -hmm. Oh, we could go to the smaller ministry over here. That may be the better spiritual mm -hmm. part of it. But over here, they have a whole lot more and they can do a lot more. And so, you know, I, I, I can climb the ladder a little bit. I'm just wondering if some of those things don't go through our minds sometime. We defeat the purpose of God rather than to say, not my will, but thine be done. Mm -hmm. Where do you want me? It might be with the two or three over here, or it might right. be with the, it's okay. That's right. Nothing's wrong with what I'm saying. If we make the right choice from the right reason why we're doing this is for His honor and glory and where do I fit, not what can it do for me. Yeah, that's the mistake that Lot made. He didn't ask someone with more knowledge, yeah. more wisdom, a closer connection with the Lord. Right. He didn't ask them, well, what should I do? When given the opportunity to separate, he didn't say, well, my, my, my. you know, he didn't go to someone who would have known better. This, this what should I do? What would be, and, and at least consider. 
consider. But uh, you know, I'm, I have to take up too much time. But so, when we were small, we uh, the first six weeks of every school year, we went to Red Key, Indiana, and we picked tomatoes. That's what we did. We picked tomatoes. Went out in the field, uh, hundreds of acres. We couldn't even get down two rows picking tomatoes in one whole day because there were so many tomatoes to pick. But what we did, well, and not trying to criticize anything or anybody that did it, but we went out maybe that evening, well, maybe the, you know, early that morning before the sun was coming up. We'd just come out there to the field. And I'm just a little tyke at that time looking at and I could hear the older ones who would drive the trucks and mm -hmm. the dads, <laughs> the uncles, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they would be looking over the tomato field. And naturally, in a tomato field, sometimes you're going to have places where there's a little bit too much water and da, 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 and it's drowning. And I could hear some of them say, and I hate to say this, oh, be careful now, is sometimes the women spoke out more than the men did. Mm. <laughs> Honey, let's choose this part over here because the tomatoes are thicker. Mm. Mm. Let's go over here because we'll, otherwise we'll pick more hampers. We'll make more money. Mm -hmm. I mean, I heard that as a young person. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that was still with family. Not trying to criticize or condemn me. I'm just saying that made an impression all these years later. I can still remember hearing that whispering in as Lot's wife was whispering into Lot's ear, honey, we don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We want to, and again, you could tell by scouting over that field where the best tomatoes were the thickest, where the vines were thick, where you could just, there's times that we could put a hamper down on the one like so and so big around. You could feel that hamper and not move. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and your goal was to pick one here and just start doing it like this and let them feel that hamper. And then I always mark mine K1, <laughs> K2, because I got three cents a hamper. You see what I mean? <laughs> put them out by the roadside. And so I'm just so saying, but we did that. Was that not the same kind of thing that was talking about here? Maybe. You know, that, that's actually similar when I was building houses with my dad. My oh. dad was very big on being efficient. Mm -hmm. But the question is, who benefits from the efficiency? Uh oh, Do you pass that efficiency on down to the customer so they get a, bigger, a better deal? Yeah. Or do you pocket that efficiency for selfishness? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was a kid, and I'm sure we've all heard this, <laughs> sticks and stones will break your bones, but words will never hurt you. Yeah. That's the wrong, wrongest statement in the world. <laughs> <laughs> the words that we speak, you heard that secondhand. You were a kid. You heard that from someone over somewhere else, yeah. and it still stuck with you. Yes. The words oh, that we speak influence others. Mm -hmm. And what this example showed me was that it can influence others around you towards their salvation yeah. or their doom. See, yeah. that could that's such a good point, but I don't mean to be labor on this part, but even as a young person, I, when I heard that, and the spirit, at least in my mind, that's not right. Mm -hmm. That's not the way you do it. Mm -hmm. You would go to, into the field, if it's your brothers and your sisters, and say, what, what, what do you want? I'll take what's left. Mm -hmm. Believing that God will reward you for doing that, there and you'll you get as many. That, see, that's going through yeah. my mind. It's like, that's not the right attitude. And that, that's the attitude that Abraham had. Okay. Because he knew that God yes, would did. bless him. Yeah. Amen. You know, God says, and it belonged to God. Yes. yes. Yeah. But everything. He, everything belonged that's to right. God. That's right. But he, God was going to take care of him and had Lot perhaps counseled with him more. Yeah. You know, maybe Abraham would have been able to convince mm -hmm. him that it's not worth sacrificing mm -hmm. your, your family to go and live amongst this. But there was things that Lot mm -hmm. learned from Abraham that he, that, he, that he kept inside his heart and mind like hospitable. He's, he was very hospitable right. to people. Yeah. Right. That's why he went out with those angels not knowing they were to begin with because that was part of what he learned from Abraham. And I thought how interesting yeah. and how life would have been different. I, when I read that, it was well, like they wanted to stay out in the street yeah. to scope out the town. Yeah. But Lot knew it was dangerous out yeah. there. It was a no good oh, town. So he, he, he welcomed them into the house. Yes. That was his heart. He yes. could have said, I'm going to let them scope out the mm -hmm. town. Yeah. We're going to go in and have tea and crumpets. Yeah. He said, no, I'm going to bring them in. Yeah. And I think that Lot knew the trouble it might draw upon him because they came later that night. They would have killed him. Oh, they boy. came later that night and said, and yeah. said give us these men. You know, yeah. we saw, we saw somebody whispered, yeah. we saw these men come in your house, give it to us. So I think Lot knew what he was getting into, but yeah. he did it anyway because his heart yeah. 
was in the right place. And that's something he did bring with him, uh -huh. that he did learn from Abraham. Mm -hmm. And you know, even before we think of the end of this world, what about now? What are we doing with our children now? Have mercy. You know, I know for ourselves, you know, we tried to keep our children in church school or did homeschool with them at times, you know, but to just send them out into the world many times is just giving them over to Babylon. Mm. We think, we think, and I often wondered, I thought, well, I went through public school, I went through public college and then university, I'm, I made it, I'm here, <laughs> you know, but that's mm -hmm. not always the case. It doesn't right. always work doesn't that work. way. Yeah. And, and regardless, there were still things that I was around, that I heard, that I was um, witness to, yes. that I should never have been, you know? Mm. I think as a parent, you plant seeds. Thank you God. plant as many seeds as you can having faith that it's going to grow over time. Right. I look mm -hmm. at the youngsters and, they, and, the, and they're, they're off in the world, they're doing their thing. And I said, boy, I was the same way. But my mother planted those seeds and they were growing and they were germinating. Yes. And one day it blossomed and I said, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is madness. So I think as, as parents, we plant those seeds and hope and pray that God will water them and that uh -huh. they'll grow. Yeah. And I think yes. in many cases they do. And, well, and there's I think... Ooh. Growing up, for me, my mother, we we were in church. We had that foundation. Mm -hmm. So even when you do go out into the world, you go back to what you know. That's right. Mm -hmm. So in your heart, you, your heart, right. you, where your heart is. And as, and as far as, as long as the parents will pay attention to what's going on in their children's lives, no matter what age they get up to, mm -hmm. even when they get to the age of going through college and, and uh, universities, some people can't afford private school, That's the church sad. school, it's like they can't afford here. Adventist education, yeah. but they can afford to put their children through the best education they can afford, but then also spend some extra time if necessary to counteract and contradict some of the negatives that they learn there. Plant those yeah, seeds. Plant, those yeah, seeds, keep, yeah, keep the seeds planted and they can even water some too. Amen. Yeah. I wonder sometimes if I always talk about my mom because Good. when I was young, she was the only one that ever believed in me. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if it wasn't for her words and her example yeah. where I would be. Mm. So even the words that she said filled up my heart enough to keep me just enough out of trouble so that one day I would give my heart to the Lord. Amen. My dad was, he was kind of the opposite. So he was the, the not so great influence and she was the great influence. Mm -hmm. But if she wasn't there, and at first I gravitated towards my father. You know, but if she wasn't there, she didn't plant those seeds in the beginning. And I wonder if they didn't plant enough seeds in the daughters because they left, they left Sodom and Gomorrah and they were still kind of wicked. They were. Oh. Because, but that, you know, it's brought out, it's because of what they had learned, how they mm. witnessed, how they thought. And the, what is it, the Moabites and the Ammonites, they become mm. terrible, terrible people mm -hmm. that eventually had to be destroyed themselves. And that was Lot's... Mm. Um, offspring. Offspring, mm -hmm. wow. you know, from the two daughters. And, and we can't even imagine what those girls, how, why they decided that. I, well, and going back, you, you mentioned about the, the angels, you know, and it being dangerous that Lot probably knew. In fact, he did know because if mm -hmm. you remember, it says he took them round about, but they lingered so long mm -hmm. because the angels kept saying, no, we'll sleep in the street, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, come on, you want, I want you to come with me. It'll be safer. Come to my house. And he, he called them lords or something, you know, yeah. basically showing respect and not knowing exactly who they were at that yeah. time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when the men did come, and this is not one of our questions, and I don't know if we have an answer for it, but I'm going to throw it out. I want to see what you guys think. Pray, kids. Why in the world? <laughs> I know I read come a little on. bit online, but it come wasn't on. anything that I know you could yeah. trust. Mm -hmm. Why in the world would Lot no. have offered his daughters? to that mob? Mm. Probably because he knew they wouldn't accept, mm. accept it. I, yeah, there's a couple other stories in the Bible that kind of parallels that situation. And, and I think that's right. He knew the town he lived in and he knew that the crowd that gathered around his house, didn't want the girls. he knew what they were interested in. That's right. Mm. And he, mm -mm -mm. I think he was trying to make them feel guilty. Yeah. You know, Here's my daughters. That's right. And said, trying to make them feel guilty to go yeah. away. But what was their response? Okay, we'll just take you instead. I have a, I have a question about that though. He offered his daughters. Mm -hmm. Did that, 
when they heard him do that, hmm. did that have an effect on them that affected them later when they were out of the city? It would have me. It would a lot right. of people. So <laughs> even his, his words, and this probably wasn't the first time, even his words had a less than ideal influence on these children that carried with them in the future. Yeah. I, I think it goes to show how distorted how, how, a, how a distorted understanding they had of the gospel. Because they understood, you go all the way back to Genesis, God promised the Messiah will come through my seed. Mm. Lot and his two daughters, they get out in the wilderness mm. with their father and like, we're the last ones. Yeah. We still have to be a part of the program oh of the Messiah coming through our seed. Yeah. Mm. And so it just goes to show how they had a very distorted idea of, of what the gospel was really mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. They must have understood something, you would think, mm -hmm. because like you say, I'm like you, if once you're leaving and all this stuff that's going on, and they're going to say, look what dad was getting ready to do to us. Right. You know, like, you know, we could keep our eye on him or let's do, you know, so there were some things that if they're not spiritual minded, they didn't really put it together. So what they might have come up with and mm -hmm. what they did, they may have justified some of their Well, Am, I, their am actions. I remembering this right? Didn't they get him drunk or he was yes. drunk? Oh, yeah. yeah. That yeah. tells you their intent right there. Yeah. They knew he wouldn't have agreed with it from yeah. if he was in the right mind. Right. So they were just kind of wicked. And, and didn't, didn't God know all this in advance? Still yet, yeah. he said, you know, Lot, get your two daughters. Let's, let's go, your family. Mm. God still knew all that stuff was going to transpire, but he still said, take them on out. Which also then contributes to, if you're going to make a decision, make it right when you're supposed to. Otherwise, that wouldn't have happened if Lot's wife would have been there. Mm. And for uh -huh. us, it shows the importance that we need to be grounded and oh, rooted mercy. in the Word of God. We That's need to right. be studying every day. We need to be witnessing every day. We mm. need to be praying consistently oh. about everything yeah. throughout the day. And yeah. it's just so important that we are just absolutely mm -hmm. grafted into that vine. For sure. Amen. I, I want you to read something for me, okay? Okay. Now, we're, uh, and we're talking about Lot's wife, right? We're talking, yes. This is the this is whole thing about it. And, and sometimes I bring up a few different things. Uh, first of all, I always said Lot's wife was very selfish. She really wasn't religious. She was against him always. She liked the things that was going on. She liked where her kids were at. She liked the materialistic things on here. Mm -hmm. And here in Patriarchs and Prophets, it says this paragraph that I've got here it in the says, yellow. Yeah, I want you to, in other words, Lot failed and he failed on two main principles that maybe we and our young people and those who are considering marriage mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. failed. They failed if we're not careful with this. So if you just read that right here and then I'll have somebody else to read the second paragraph. It's very powerful. You're talking about being unequally yoked. The wife of Lot was a selfish, irreligious woman Go ahead. and her Go ahead. influence was exerted to separate her husband from Abraham. Yeah, she's but for her, Lot would not have remained in Sodom, See? deprived of the counts of the wise, God-fearing patriarch. Wow. Oh, that's wow. heavy. Go ahead. The influence of his wife and the associates of the wicked city would have led him to apostatize from God had it not been for the faithful instruction he had early received yeah. from Abraham. Abraham. Yes. And that's what we're talking wow. about. We hope that our children will receive from us. Mm -hmm. The marriage of Lot and his choice of Sodom. Stop. Go ahead. What was it now? The marriage of Lot. Go, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> Not just me. Made my hearing. We're talking about the, two points the that caused this whole, the, two, the two points that caused the whole mess. And his choice of Sodom. Okay. For a home marriage were the first links in a choice. chain in, in a chain of events fraught with evil to the world mm -hmm. for many generations. And it was even for the children of God. Okay. It affected God's people for many generations. Yeah. yeah. So what was the two points, hon? His marriage and his choice of where they were to live. All that saying simply is the importance of those who are considering marriage and yes. our young people for today. And it goes on about unequally yoked together and so on and so forth. And get, he wouldn't even have left Abraham 
if it had not been for his wife whispering in his ear, you need to go. That just shows he choose. had a love he had, for oh, the he, truth. He, loved, love for the he truth. had love for truth, but he also had a deep love for his wife, mm -hmm. that he listened to her rather than to God. So we had to be careful with that. Mm -hmm. and, and the nice thing there, I don't know, you know, if there was anything written that Abraham had, you know, written down, but he was a prophet. You know, God was mm -hmm. speaking directly to him so he could tell him, mm -hmm. you know, God told me this, God showed me this, yeah. God said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, how, the principles, what a neat. principles there. Let Sister Linda read that second paragraph. It's a simple reading, but you read that because it goes along with this. And I have a burden for this, and I think we all do, right. with those who are wanting to choose a mate for life. Mm -hmm. They can be a real blessing or they can be a curse. Mm -hmm. right. And we have to do the best thing we can do. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. No one who fears God can, without danger, connect himself with one who fears him not. Mm -hmm. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Uh -huh. Amos 3.3. 3. Mm -hmm. The happiness and prosperity of the marriage relation depend upon the unity of the parties. But between the believer and the unbeliever, there is a radical difference of tastes, inclinations, and purposes. They are two, serving two masters between whom there can be no concord. Yeah. However, pure and correct one's principles may be the influence of an unbelieving companion will have a tendency to lead away from God. Well, oh you know, the interesting thing that came to my mind as we just read that together mm -hmm. is that could be why she had a lack of faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Even though Good. That's right. I felt like it was <laughs> something that I might have, you know, just non-consciously <laughs> had done, but it could be that that's why she had a lack of faith. Her heart mm -hmm. was in the world and unwilling to give it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she wasn't right. converted. Yeah, she wasn't converted. She wasn't converted. Right. Yeah, it was more than just the love of her children. Yeah. It was the love of the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that. she was leaving behind. So that's deeper, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that deeper? You're talking about it's deeper. Mm -hmm. He had the it's love of, of his children. You know, we yeah. read that earlier. He had the love of his children, but he also had a love for God mm -hmm. and a faith in God. And, and a deep love for He his wife. realized that those were angels sent of heaven. And of course, later, the Bible, I don't think, brings this out, but the Spirit of Prophecy does because... Jesus himself went and told him, don't stop in, here in the plain. You go to the mountains. Mm -hmm. And it was Jesus that he was talking to. Yes. And he said, oh, but Lord, I don't think I can survive there. You know, Could, couldn't I go over here? To, to, Zohar. to I, I, Zohar. I hear that sometimes today. People think, oh, you know, I'm so comfortable here in the big city and, and I have my job and and uh, my work is only five minutes from my home and everything's very comfortable. They don't think ahead, hey, we've got some things gonna be happening in the big cities. Yes. Uh, we don't Look think at what happened oh during my. COVID, how <laughs> fast. Oh my. They can mm -hmm. shut those roads down and say, you, you cannot leave. <laughs> they didn't let people leave out of New York. Yes. It can mm -hmm. happen again. And the okay. enemy wants us to have everything everyone together mm -hmm. so that everyone can lose their individuality. Well, now they're talking oh, about 15 minute 15 cities. Minute cities yeah. You know, you see yeah. that on TV, commercials for 15. Everything's you can, right there. Yeah, you don't, no need of a car, no mm -hmm. need to do this. Everything's walk, walking distance of 15 minutes. And The one thing the Bible emphasizes to, when I read it is when it happens, it always happens fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And if you're there when it happens, you're not gonna be happy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say, well, I'm going to wait to see it start to heat up or I'm going to wait till, you know, oh. till the clouds start boiling or something. Then I'm going to make a decision. Yeah. Well, if you didn't make it by then, you're yeah. never going to make it. Yeah, oh, that's true. What, what I find interesting about the, he wanted to go to Zoar. The Bible explains that in this valley where's, where there's this oasis and paradise mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and this tropical, mm. tropical land, it began at Zoar. And so Lot is saying, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the city, but can I just go, go to the edge? Yeah. I don't, I don't want to go all the way out into the wilderness. Can I just go to the edge? And what, what shocked me was when <laughs> I read that, because I just read that yesterday, yeah. was the angel said, hurry up and go to Zor because we can't start until yeah. you get yeah. there. Yeah. That's mercy. Let me tell you something else that's mercy. Yeah. When Lot hesitated, the angels actually grabbed them, mm. grabbed his wife, despite where she might have been spiritually, grabbed the daughters. Mm. That was such love, such yeah. mercy, such Amen. compassion. They were willing to get them out of there to do whatever it took. Amen. And um, we are told that 
the angels at the end of time, they may be leading us to safe places as well. That's right. That is right. mercy, that yeah. is love, that is a God that we need yeah. to give our hearts and our lives and our service to continually. I heard a pastor say that God will do everything he can mm -hmm. to save each one of us, yes. even yes. our children. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if they don't make it, that was their decision. Mm -hmm. And we still love them, but we can't stay with them. We have to move forward. I just wish I could mm. shake some sense into them mm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. But you yeah. know, yes. we may be leaving things behind, but for everything we leave behind, we will be abundantly rewarded. Uh, I have not yeah. seen, you know, the Bible says, nor ear heard the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Mm -hmm. And we want to be part of that. Marilyn and yeah. I, we have yeah. zero regrets having listened to the Lord. Yeah. We were thinking, how are we going to afford to live? How are we going to do this? How, how is this going to even work out? Zero regrets. We haven't lost a thing. Yeah. And matter yeah. of fact, we've gained, yeah. we've oh, gained so much more because we get to work together yes. every day and things like that. So God always Amen. blesses you Amen. when you follow him. That's the lesson that I learned. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I, I think we could chime Amen. right in there. Go ahead. The only thing I think about now is I have no retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I want to retire, Christians but, don't we're retire. Just, but we're at that age that it would be nice if you had a retirement to draw from, you know, so maybe you could step back just a little bit. But, you know, we being in the service of God, there's no better place on this earth than where God wants you to be. Amen. And um, remember what the man, go ahead. Yeah. You talk about you, you would like a little bit of retirement. So you want to live in Zoar. Instead of Sodom, you want to live in Zoar instead of living oh. in the wilderness you know, oh. where God no, calls us to no, live. No, no, <laughs> right? no. I'm no. just talking about money that I would have earned if I had stayed in education. You right. can let him have it later but anyway, on I'll, about I'll, that. I'll like that <laughs> Remember what that one man said when he called us to go out to Arizona? And mm. we said, we're, we're scheduled almost every weekend mm -hmm. there for several months. And so we're just so busy, busy, busy. And said, we just can't possibly do it, you know, because we just, just, it's no time here. We're just, you know, he said, we said, and he said, well, uh, uh, you just come on out here anyway. He said, doesn't make any difference. He said, uh, you, you can uh, retire and you can take time when you get to heaven. Just mm. come on out. Amen. <laughs> so maybe that's what it is, right? We're, we're preparing for him. Yes. Our bread and water will be sure. That's Remember. Right. Yeah. We are just about out of time. Well, just yeah. a closing thought. Okay. But those who heed the warning shall dwell in the secret place of the Most Ooh. High and abide under the yeah. shadow of the Almighty. Yeah. His truth shall be our shield and mm. our buckler. Amen. For them yeah. is the promise. With long life shall I satisfy him and show him my salvation. This was lots wife part two there will be a part three amen there will be you know what we'll just have a closing prayer and then we'll just go out with that or 10 seconds left i want you to have a quick prayer and we'll just go out with okay that. most gracious heavenly father we thank you for this study together we thank you for your dear loving holy spirit mm -hmm. we thank you for encouraging us and for amen. helping us to to learn that we need to predetermine what our yes. decisions will be yeah. based on the word of god in jesus name, name. we pray amen, amen.